Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Sickville York. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it is my pleasure to rise today to make a brief comment on the budget. I can't say that it's very often that I rise to congratulate the government on what they have done, but today I want to mark on the record my appreciation of the inclusion of the pooled registered pension plan in this most recent budget. As many of you will remember, I introduced and debated a private member's bill on this very topic back in 2014. At the time, I argued and still believe that the PRPP is a flexible tool for retirement savings that presents an opportunity for those without a workplace pension plan. I am glad to see that this government recognizes the importance of this savings vehicle, and it is my hope that people from across Ontario will be able to build a more secure future with this tool at their disposal. As a private member in the opposition, it is not often that one has the pleasure of seeing ideas their ideas translated into legislation. While we all represent different parties come election time, the most important function we as elected officials have is to serve those who placed their trust in us. I am pleased that this issue transcends party partisan lines and will provide opportunity for those without a workplace pension to save for a more secure retirement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member states, the member from Bramley Gore Moulton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I got elected in 2011, and at that time there were three pressing issues in the riding. Concerns were around emergency services at the hospital, there were concerns around auto insurance rates, and there were concerns around temporary job agencies, the precarious employment that flows from that. After six years, this government has done nothing to address these issues. On each issue, this government has failed. Whether it's emergency wait times, people continue to face problems, not just in my riding, but across this province. Auto insurance, on this file, this government continues to prefer, to prefer to prioritize the profits of insurance companies over the protection of the people of this province. They've seen their protection slashed time and time again, putting more profits in the pockets of insurance companies. And with precarious employment on this issue of, of grave importance, particularly when it comes to racialized people, women, and newcomers to this country, we see that this government has allowed temporary job agencies to exploit workers in this province. They continue to work in conditions which are substandard, and they continue to face the scenario where sometimes as much as half of their pay is clawed back by the agency. This is unacceptable. We deserve better. The people of this province need better, and New Democrats are the only ones who will deliver it for the people. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statement, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a proud Portuguese Canadian, I'm honoured to rise today to speak about Portuguese History and Heritage Month in Ontario and about Portugal Day, or as it is known throughout the Portuguese diaspora, Dia de Portugal, de Camões e das Comunidades Portuguesas. June 10 has been enshrined as Portugal Day in memory of the great Portuguese poet Luís de Camões and his famous epic poems, the Lusíades. Camões died on June 10, 1580. Throughout the month of June, cultural performances, history seminars, poetry readings, street parades, and many other activities will take place all across Ontario to celebrate and promote the richness of the history and traditions of the many regions of Portugal. These celebrations help to educate the Portuguese Canadian youth of their origins, as well as other communities across Ontario, about the Portuguese culture and about the many economic, political, and societal and so social contributions that the Portuguese Canadian community has made and continues to make to our province. As a member of Provincial Parliament for Davenport and a proud member of the Portuguese community, I'm privileged to represent the riding with the largest Portuguese Canadian community in Ontario, and in fact, in all of Canada. Finally, I would like to remind everyone about the annual Portugal Day Parade, organized annually by the Alliance of Portuguese Clubs and Associations, this year being held on Saturday, June 10th. I hope to see you there. Obrigado, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Bruce Gray, Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise to share good news today. 
Last Friday, I was honoured to join 1,000 supporters from my riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound at the grand opening of the new 18,500 square foot Chapman House Hospice located in Owen Sound. The hospice is a community project that's been years in the making and involved many supporters of compassionate, end of life palliative care. The Chapman family and Chapman's Ice Cream of Markdale generously donated $1 million towards this important project. Members of the Chapman family were among the people who attended Friday's ribbon cutting event. Hospice Executive Director Scott Lovell praised everyone at last week's celebration, recognizing, and I quote, we've done really well. We're really proud of the way the community has supported this project, but he did remind that we've got a little bit more to go with another $289,000 left to be raised in our community. A little plug in case people are listening. The hospice is a community-owned, community-operated facility and a building project that has been entirely funded by private funds with operating provided by the provincial government. Ashley Chapman, the famous ice cream company's vice president, also announced that a large number of their staff have actually donated and will continue to donate from their paychecks to support the ongoing operation of Chapman House, and furthermore, that Chapman's would be also donating a lifetime supply of ice cream to the hospice so visitors and others can always enjoy a frozen treat. About 360 patients from across Grey Bruce have stayed at the hospice since it opened its tem temporary location at Seasons Retirement Community in May 2013, with construction actually starting in 2016 in April, and the first patients actually officially arrived today. I invite the House to join me in congratulating the good work of hospice staff, board members, volunteers, as well as everyone who financially supported the project to bring the people of Bruce Grey Owen Sound an area of compassionate care in a setting that feels like home. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Two further member statements the member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise to address the whole question of a relief line for the Bloor Danforth subway. People may be well aware that that subway is facing a crisis. In my riding at Pape Subway Station, people have to wait two and three trains at rush hour to get on a train. They are packed. People who are coming down from Don Mills on buses to Pape trying to get on the subway can't get on. They're stranded on the platforms. It, when people get to Young Street, <clears throat> the platforms are packed there. They have to wait multiple trains to get on the subway. People in this city depend on the strong, reliable, accessible operation of that subway system. The reality is that the city is planning a relief line that will go through Pape Subway Station and make a huge difference to the operation of the system but no funds have been allocated from the province to do this work. As much as the Premier talks about the huge amount that's going to be allocated with infrastructure money, this project does not have a budget allocation. Speaker, the City of Toronto has called for an allocation of funds so that this critical piece of infrastructure can get built. I support that call. If we're going to avoid congestion in the city, if we're going to deal with pollution, with climate change, we have to have a transit system that works, and this is a key piece to ensure that it does work. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. <clears throat> Further statements by members? The member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker. The annual Girls Can Fly event at the Waterloo Wellington Flight Centre highlights something that is very near and dear to my heart, and that's the promotion of women in STEM careers science, technology, engineering, and math. It's an open invitation to girls who are 8 to 18 to come out and tour the facility, meet women in aviation, and even get a free flight on a small airplane or a helicopter. Speaker, when you look at how many women women actually work in Canada's aviation industry today, the numbers are quite dismal, only 5 per cent. While women have made great strides in other streams, in aviation there's still a very long way to go. And that's what Girls Can Fly is all about, offering girls the opportunity to get inspired by experiencing firsthand the possibilities. I'm pleased to say that over 240 girls and teens came out to the airport to take part in the day-long event. One of the speakers, Ann Hoffman, works in the control tower at Pearson Airport. She is only one of two women controllers on a team of 43. Another speaker, Contessa Bishop, is a Q400 airplane captain. And Shaban O'Hanlon is a 22-year-old first officer at Sunwin Airlines, and she's a graduate of the University of Waterloo's Geography and Aviation Program. Speaker, these women are helping to inspire the next generation of females in flight 
something that might seem out of reach for many young girls. But as Amelia Earhart once said, never interrupt someone doing something that you said couldn't be done. Thank you. I'll remember that. Member statements. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. Access to the internet has become increasingly tied to the economic development of local communities. In order to attract investment, jobs, families, and build a knowledge-based economy, a community must be able to provide fast and affordable internet connections. That's why I welcome Flash Fiber's $400 million investment in Durham Region to upgrade the aging internet infrastructure. This will allow for affordable and fast fiber optic internet television, phone, and IT products and services, beginning with the city of Oshawa in the summer of 2017. This fits speaker with the region of Durham's strategic vision to fuel economic growth and attract new business. This new IT infrastructure will connect the region's many thriving economic sectors, including education, manufacturing, and health care. Speaker, building on these sectors strengthens the economy, leading to job growth and attracts families to the area who want to live, work and play in Durham Region's communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Waterloo Region is fortunate to be home to Community Justice Initiatives, a groundbreaking nonprofit organization that teaches us about the principles of restorative justice and helps all people who are impacted by crimes and violence heal in a more holistic and meaningful way. I recently attended a Fresh Start Creations donation ceremony at Grand Valley Institution, a federal penitentiary in Kitchener. Fresh Start Creations is a grassroots initiative that started when the women of GVI decided that they wanted to give back to society. The the cards are created with volunteers from CJI and sold in our community with proceeds donated by the women to a charity of their choice. The night that I was there, the women at the Maximum Security Unit donated $500 to Anselma House, a non-profit that supports women and children who are fleeing abusive environments. I promised the women I met at GVI that I would take their kindness and resiliency with me back to Queen's Park and share what I've learned about the importance of restorative justice with my colleagues. I also promised them that we would start selling their beautiful Beautiful cards at the Legislative Assembly gift shop. The cards are now for sale, so I encourage you all to stop by the gift shop and support the creative work that the women at GVI are doing to change their own lives and perspectives about incarcerated women. Mr. Speaker, everyone deserves a chance to give up, give back, and quite honestly, these women at, at uh, GVI are inspirational. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further member statements to member from Ottawa Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, speaker, I stand today to recognize Bruce Power as they are the first and only Canadian company to win the Top Innovative Practice Award. The Top Innovative uh, Innovation Awards are the nuclear industry's highest recognition of excellence bestowed by the Nuclear Energy Asso Assembly this year in Scottsdale, Arizona. Since 19 1994, these awards have recognized creative new ideas and techniques developed by the nuclear industry's talented workforce. They have a direct impact on improving safety and rel reliability of the nuclear energy industry around the world. The TIP Award was given to Bruce Power for their production of Cobalt 60 with an Ottawa-based company, Nordion. Cobalt 60 sterilizes more than 40% of the world's single-use medical devices, such as sutures, gloves, and syringes, and saves countless, countless lives by treating cancer patients. Cobalt 60 is also used worldwide for alternative treatments to traditional brain surgery and radiation therapy for the treatment of complex brain conditions through a specialized non-invasive knife. Speaker, this is a, really a great news, a great Ontario news story, a great Canadian news story. Uh, we, this partnership provides the balance of the world's Cobalt 60, which is critical not just for medical but for also uh, uh, food needs as well. And I'm pr proud to st stand today and. Uh, and recognize Bruce Power. Thank you. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees.